Birroid Studio Hair Accessories. Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. This time I will show you how to make any kind of accessory with hair in Birroid Studio. I will show you the bases to do it and then how to adjust them so they don't follow the head all the time. Any kind of accessory can be done if the hair guide is moved with these options. It can cover up any part of the body. It just needs to be adjusted to have the right shape we are looking for. Also mess around a little bit with the parameters. A few of the things that can be done with the Birroid Studio are animal ears, tails, extra cloth parts, and some people take this to the extreme. For example, to make a tail, move the hair guide down here. And then you can draw the hair, or you can do it backwards. Draw first, and then move the hair guide. In this case I will duplicate the hair group, and give some adjustments, so it can have more volume. In the case of the animal ears, you can raise the hair guide like this, and then you can draw them. You can modify the hair direction with the last option. Depending on the type of ears, you can draw them from the front or from the back. This kind of ears usually have two color tones, so I will duplicate this first group, place it a little bit forward, and then change the color. It can be modified as much as it's needed. In the case of wings, it is recommended to make some sort of a screen with the hair guide and draw them from the back. Knowing this, you can make different skirts, capes, weapons, and stuff like this. But all of this will be linked to the head, so it must be adjusted in Unity. But before exporting your model, it must have the following settings. And the first setting is that the model must have at least one bone in each accessory. Of course, you can have more than one. In this model's case, I will add seven in all the cape, one in each side of the shoulder cape, one in the belt, and the usual hair physics. I will be using this model for this tutorial. And before exporting, disable hair combination. Now you can export your model without any issue. Now let's go to Unity. This is what we need. Unity, UniVRM, and this plugin called Wake Transfer Tool. All the links will be in the description. Create a new Unity project in 3D and then import UniVRM. Once that's imported, import the Wake Transfer Tool. It is recommended to make a folder to import your model. Drag and drop your model inside the folder. Once it's done, drag and drop your model to the hierarchy. Right click the model in the hierarchy and choose Unpack Prefab. An easy way to find the right hair object is to double click it in the scene, that way it will show in the hierarchy. This tail contains several hair pieces. Now open the model tree and search for the head bone. Once you find it, go to tools and select weight transfer, and a new window will pop up. This window works like this. First box is for the mesh you want to edit, in this case the hair mesh. The second box is for the origin bone, in this case the head bone. And the last box is for the destination bone, in this case the hips bone. Drag and drop the elements to the right box. And then click here. You must do this with each hair piece of the tail. Now open the head bone tree and search for the bone that controls the tail. To make sure which bone is the right one, select it and then test it with these options. And to finish, drag and drop the tail bone to the hips bone. Now the tail will not follow the head. And this would be it for a tail. You can export the model. Mm. 
now I will show you different types of clothing. In this model the following parts need adjustments. The shoulder cape, the cape as it is, and the belt. Once again right click on the model and choose on back prefab. Double clicking the hair to find that the hierarchy also works. To make this easier I will rename each hair part to know what it is. I will start with the belt, then the shoulder cape and then the cape. Now open the model 3 of the head bone. Here you can find the bones that control the hair and the accessories. And once again, you can test out the bone by selecting it and with these options. If you have too much accessories, it is recommended to rename the bones. This one will be called Cinturón, which means belt in Spanish. Now go to tools and choose weight transfer. In this case, I want to be able to move the whole belt with just one bone. So the destination bone will be the belt bone, and the origin bone is the head bone. Now I will be adding the first mesh, and this is why it is recommended to rename the parts. Once everything is set, click here. If everything went alright, you will see this notification. Now I will be adding the other part of the belt. And now this bone can control the whole belt. And the last step is to take this bone and drag and drop it to the hips bone. That way it will stop following the head. Now the belt remains in place. It's time to do the same with the cape. Once again select the parts in the scene, rename any in the hierarchy, search for the correct bone, use the weight transfer tool, and change the parent of the bone. Each shoulder cape will be added to the shoulders. Something important about the accessories is that they will have physics. In this model, I don't want to have physics in the shoulder cape and in the belt. To remove physics, select the secondary component. This component contains all the physics from the model, and all of these are groups of bones with physics. Everything in the root bones boxes are bones with physics. This is another reason to rename the bones. Once you find the component with the bones with physics that you want to remove, right-click the component and select Remove Component. I will be doing this with the shoulder cape and the belt. Once that's done, you can test your model by clicking Play. In case your model doesn't show any physics at all, Select the secondary component, search for the group with physics you want to test, and delete whatever it is in the root box. And while selecting the whole model, you can see the physics. Finally, you can select your model, choose VRM, and choose Export Humanoid. And what it appears here is just a warning, it doesn't affect the model. What really matters is the name, the version, and the author. Now you can export the model. Now I will show you a different case of models with accessories in the arms. In this type of models, the accessories will remain here, so it is necessary for hair bones to control all this area. That way you will be able to move the prop and set it in the right place. The process is pretty much the same. Unpack prefab, rename the parts, and set everything to the hair bones. 
so you can avoid this kind of problems. And it is also recommended to optimize as much as you can the number of hairs if you are going to do this kind of stuff. Once set correctly, you can move the whole object. I will be doing the same with the other side. And these kind of props can be taken even further. Let's take a look at this example. I made some claws with hair and linked each of them to each finger. And this is all for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to know how to convert VRM models to PMX models, check out this other video. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. See you next time.